feeling when you have run around all day long? Run around, checking things off your list, doing as many things as you can, and you run around busy all day long. And then when you slip into bed at night and your head hits the pillow and you think to yourself, why didn't I get more done? I didn't do enough. I needed to do more today, even though you were busy all day long. Right? We've all had that feeling, haven't we? That, my friends, is chaos. That's chaos in our lives. And I get it. I get it because we are overwhelmed with all of the things we have to do each day. We are overwhelmed by our tasks. We are overwhelmed by our appointments. We're overwhelmed by our own to-do lists, right? I hear this everywhere I go from all kinds of people at all stations of life, no matter where they are in business, they work for a corporation or they're running their own business, overwhelmed. But I'm here to tell you, overwhelm isn't having too much to do. It's not knowing where to start. And that is what we're going to focus on today. We're gonna to focus on where do you start? Because when you know where to start and you know what to work on next, that is when you begin to feel empowered. That is when you begin to feel like you are in control of your day. Too often we feel like we don't own our day. Someone else does, right? We don't feel that ownership over our own time. But you start to feel that when you know where to start. And I get it, especially if you are a creative or you are working to create a business or maybe this is your side business. I get it because we're taking off our hats and changing hats all day long. I'm putting on my marketing hat, then I put on my product development hat, then I put on my PR hat, then I put on my mom hat. There's all these hats we're wearing, right? It gets overwhelming and we often don't know where to start. I had to do that myself when I started my first business. So we touched on my story a little bit and I wanna go over it just really quickly so you can see how I learned my lessons on productivity. Now, as Rachel shared, I started my first business with $50. It was supposed to be a little side business, something for fun, because my husband, at the time, was traveling all over the world. He would literally leave our home in Dallas, Texas, and he would fly all the way around the planet and come back on the other side. He'd be gone three and a half, four weeks at a time. I thought I would go crazy with two small kids, and I needed a creative outlet. So I thought, this will be fun. I'll start a business. Right? This will be so fun! This will be great! Oh my gosh, what was I thinking, right? So I was running this little business, no big deal. And then I had a conversation with my husband, who was on the other side of the planet at the time. And he shared with me that he felt like he was missing a lot. He was missing everything, in his words. Missing time with our kids, missing their milestones, missing the moments. And I stood in my kitchen that day, stay-at-home mom, zero business experience, had never even taken a single business class. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna grow this business and I'm gonna grow it to the point where he can stop working in corporate America and come work alongside me. Was that crazy or what, <laughs> right? What was I thinking there? I still had a husband who traveled three and a half, four weeks at a time. I still had two tiny kids and I still had zero business experience. But I sat down and I mapped it out and I figured out what I needed to do. And about a year later, sure enough, I was able to absorb my husband's income and we were able to work together. And we loved it, it was great. I loved working with him, it's what allowed us to move here to Asheville. And we were really happy. But I wasn't happy with what I was creating and what I was doing. But what was amazing was I was able to really unlock the biggest secret to productivity during that time. Because I was hustling, I was running around, I was working day and night and night and day. And when I wasn't working, I was diapering kids and I was running around doing a thousand different things. And I realized productivity is not about doing more. Productivity is about doing what matters most. It is doing what is most important in our time and in our day. Because we all have the same 168 hours in our week. Every one of us has exactly that same amount of time. It's how we choose to use it. And that's the thing. How we spend our time is a choice. 
So I took those lessons I learned and I applied them because there's a whole other story I could tell you, which we're not going to get into today, about how I lost my passion for what I was doing and how I rekindled a new passion for opening up a new business. And so I opened up my new business that I was very passionate about called Inkwell Press. And it started off with just me and my husband working out of our basement. We started with a list of zero because I did not want to bring over my old customers and try to convince them into what I was doing now because it was so different. We started with a list of zero and on our launch, four months later, we had 500 orders. That was the day that I thought to myself, okay, we're not gonna be sleeping in our car under a bridge. We're actually gonna be able to feed our children, right? Because this was our sole income. Within 18 months, I was able to grow to a seven-figure business. At the time, I had three employees, me, my husband, and one other person. And we continued to grow. Within two years, we were in national channels, Office Depot, Office Max, Barnes & Noble, launched a podcast. We've continued to grow. We have videos that we do. We now have courses that we do. And recently, I just signed a two-book deal with a major publishing house. We have continued to grow. And my team, who's here today, is still very, very small. And we do it because we don't try to do everything. We try to focus in on what matters most. And that is what eliminates this chaos. That is what allows us to really move forward in the direction we want to go. So what I'd love to do today is focus in on three keys for how you can eliminate chaos and really figure out what matters most to you. I like to call them the three C's. So C number one is to compartmentalize. Compartmentalize your life. I want to make sure the slide is moving forward. There we go. I think it's really important to compartmentalize because that's what allows us to get into these deep pockets of focus. When I'm at home, I want to be focused on home. I want to be focused on my family. I want to be focused on my husband. I want to be focused on my friends. And when I'm at work, I want to be focused on my work. I don't want to feel guilty about what I haven't done at home. Because when I'm able to really focus, I can get into that deeper work. I'm able to really create and explore and innovate all the reasons why I wanted to start my own business, right? Every time you are pulled out with a distraction, it takes you over 20 minutes to get back to that deeper work. 20 minutes. So when you compartmentalize, you close one door and you go into this compartment, the work compartment. And then when I close that door, I go into my work or my home compartment. And that's what allows me, when I'm at home with my family, to not pick up my phone and scroll and check my email when I'm having a conversation with my husband, sending him the message that, you know what, this is probably more important than you, right? Compartmentalizing allows us to really focus in our time. And our focus is such a key commodity to really dive deep into what we really want to do. And I think one of the challenges we have as small business owners is to set our business hours. It's really easy if you go to a corporation and they're like, you can get there at 8 and you leave at 5, right? But when you're working out of your home or working out of the coffee shop or you're working late hours because this is a side business, I get it. My first shipping center was my dining room, right? My first office was the spare bedroom. My first desk was about this big in the corner of the kitchen. So I get it. It becomes really hard. But what happens is our time bleeds into the other areas of our world. We think, oh, I'm just going to spend a few minutes working. And the next thing you know, it's been hours and hours. And your family is saying, why are you always working? Why don't you have time for us? And then you feel guilty about the time you haven't spent at work, and you feel guilty about the time that you haven't spent with your family, right? So it's really important to set your business hours. So that doesn't have to be the same every day. We get caught in this idea that business hours have to be the same every day. For me, when I was starting my business, my big work days were Tuesday and Thursday. You know why? Mother's Day out, right? So I didn't work a lot on Mondays. I didn't work a lot on Wednesdays or Fridays. I worked a little bit, but my big days where I pushed were Tuesdays and Thursdays. So on Sundays, I would set my hours. What are the hours I am working this week? And it's okay if your hours of business are 11 o'clock at night 
if that's what works for you and where you are in your life right now. What matters is that you set this compartment for yourself so you know when you want to start and when you want to stop. Because you have to stop. We can't always keep tweaking and, and fiddling with what we're doing because that's when our time begins to bleed into our home life, right? So here's one of the things that I think people really, did I go backwards? I think I might have, oh no. I'm a little confused by this clicker. <laughs> one of the things that I think people really confuse is hours of business versus hours of availability. We get frustrated, don't we? When we have clients or customers who email us at 11 o'clock at night and they think that they should get a response right away. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The problem is, if you've been up late working one evening this week at 11 o'clock at night and you've responded to a customer, what have you just told that customer? Hey, guess what? I'm available, right? We get so frustrated when people invade our sacred spaces, when they overstep their boundaries. But if we don't tell them what our boundaries are, how do they know? They have no idea, do they? So it's okay if you're working at 11 o'clock, 2 in the morning, whenever it is that you're working. If your hours of availability are not during that time period, you don't send emails out. You don't send communication to customers. You can write it, save it as a draft, schedule it with a tool like Boomerang, but you don't make yourself available unless you're okay with being available during that time. We have to communicate in order to set those boundaries, and I think that is really important. So you set it in your voicemail, you put it in your email footer, you put it in your contracts, if you have contracts with clients or customers. You make sure it is clear when your hours of availability are, and then you stick to them. You don't think to yourself, oh, I don't know, maybe this client is really difficult and she really wants an answer right away. Uh-uh, no, no. <laughs> you are opening a door you don't want to open. You don't want to do that. So making sure you've compartmentalized and you've set these hours for yourself, I think is so, so incredibly important. So key number one is to compartmentalize. Key number two is to create plans. I'm amazed at the number of times people tell me that they haven't spent time planning. They don't sit down and intentionally create space for themselves to plan. And as I said, productivity is not about doing more. It's about doing what is most important. And that means prioritizing, figuring out what is most important, and then creating plans. So what is most important? Your priorities are sitting front and center of your day. If you don't own your day, who does? If you're not creating plans for your day, who's creating those plans? And see, we have to get used to the idea that not everything is a priority. We have to stop trying to do all the things, don't we? We have to really focus in on what matters most. And in the pursuit of trying to do all of these things, we end up doing nothing. We end up spinning our wheels, and this is why we are busy all day long and then feel like we haven't done enough. This is why we feel obligated to be busy. We often confuse urgent with what's important. We think they're the same. What is urgent has to be important. I have to work on that first because it's urgent. But quite frankly, urgent only means that it's tied to time. That's it. But we work on those things first. You know why? Because they scream and they yell and they shout and they ping and they beep and they, right? And we can't ignore them. It's so much easier to ignore the important things because the urgent things are so much louder to us. So we work on these little things that are urgent. Email feels urgent. Guess what? Email, not urgent. Not at all, right? And yet we spend our time putting out these fires because we hear them. We hear them calling out to us, and we don't work on the important work, the things that are important to us, the things that really do matter to us in our world. And this is why I like to tell people, you've got to toss your to-do list. <gasps> oh my God, productivity experts said to throw away your to-do list. That doesn't make any sense, right? Raise your hand if you use a to-do list. Oh, everyone's gonna raise their hand because we all make to-do lists. But you know what I don't like about to-do lists? They're long, 
you just throw things in there, right, as they come up. So normally they're about three miles longer than what you have time to do. Am I right? Yeah. And they don't tell you where to start. And as we talked about at the beginning, overwhelm isn't having too much to do. It's not knowing where to start. Does your to-do list tell you where to start? Most people, when they make a to-do list, you know where they start? With the easiest thing to check off, because that feels so good. I love checking things off my to-do list, right? Oh, we love that. We'll write down things that we've already done just to check them off. Uh-huh. I see you. I know you. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're not alone in that. So this is what we need to do. We need to toss the to-do list, which I know is frightening. It seems scary. What do I do? We make a priority list. Priority list takes exactly, exactly the same amount of time to write as a to-do list. But here's the trick. You think while you put it down, so it tells you where to start. You start at the top of your priority list, and you work your way down. So I have categories for the to-do list. The first one is your immediate items. And you can see an image of the priority list there on the side. So we'll reference that here in a second. But you start with your top category, which is your immediate tasks. So these are items that are important and they're urgent. They're tied to a deadline, but they are important. They are tied to a goal. They're tied to your mission, your vision of where you want to take your business or your passion project. So these are things like last minute tweaks to a project for a client or your car breaks down, right? Immediate means urgent and important. The second category is important tasks. So these are tasks that are important, but not really urgent. So they're not tied to time. You'll notice on that list, this category is the biggest because this is where you want to spend the majority of your time. This is where you want to focus. This is where you get into the deeper work where you can innovate and create and really explore what makes you happy. This is where you start a project four months before it's due. This is where you get the car serviced so it doesn't break down and become the urgent task, right? And then our final category is insignificant. These are items that are simply urgent, but not important. 99% of your inbox at this very moment falls under this category. And so with a priority list, you start at the top and you work your way down. You know exactly where to start. And that is powerful. That eliminates that feeling of overwhelm that contributes to the chaos we feel. And then our third C is cut so you can grow. Cut so you can grow. And I think people undervalue this because every time you say yes, you're saying no to something else. You don't realize it because it feels so good in the moment to say yes when someone asks you to do something. You think, yes! And then you think, oh God, no. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. I don't, I've been there. Uh-huh. We forget that when we say yes, it comes with obligations. It comes with our time and our energy and our focus. So when we say yes to someone else's project, we're saying no to our own passion projects. When we say yes to volunteering our time in something that we're not passionate about, we're saying no to time with our family. I'd like you to take your name tag off. I don't want you to look at it. Today it says on your name tag, if I had one hour today to do anything, I would So I now I want you to think about this. I want you to close your eyes for me for just 10 seconds. And I want you to think about when is the last time you said yes to that activity? Oh, okay, okay, hold on. Let me back it up too. When's the last time, right? Uh-huh. They're like, never. Let, let me back this up even further. When's the last time you said yes to that without feeling guilty? Oh, yeah. But you're saying yes to things that don't matter to you. You're saying yes to things that aren't important to you while you are saying no to this thing you have written down on your heart today, right? It's sitting over your heart as this is what I really want to do. Every time you say yes, you are saying no to something else. 
Just because we have the time doesn't mean it needs to be a yes. Doesn't mean you need to do it. But I get it. Opportunity only knocks once, so we've got to answer the door every time it comes, right? Oh, boy, that door knocks an awful lot at my house. I don't know about you guys. Lots of opportunities that I really should be saying no to. And it's hard. I get it. And you're up here, and you're listening to me, and you're like, oh, yeah, right. Cut so you can grow. That makes no sense. Let me tell you a quick little story. There was this guy who started a business, and he started it out of his garage. You know what? You may have heard of this guy. His name's Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve Jobs started, and for, one, for three years, three years, he offered one product, the Apple One. He didn't add. He didn't keep putting more SKUs out, thinking he needed to add more to grow. He focused on one thing until he got it right, and then he grew. And we all know the story of poor Steve Jobs. Oh, poor Steve Jobs got pushed out of Apple, and then they called him back in. You know what happened when Steve Jobs came back to Apple? At the time, they were $1 billion in debt. Apple was $1 billion with a B dollars in debt. Can you imagine that? Steve Jobs comes in. You know what he does? He says, we're cutting 70% of what we offer. Cutting. Took items off the shelf. He took products that were about to go on shelf. He took those out. He took products that were in innovations, and he cut them, slashed them, 70%. One year later, they, Apple went from $1 billion in debt to $300 million in profit. He cut so they could grow. So you may not believe me, but come on, Steve's got a little bit of street cred, doesn't he? Right? And I think that's what we forget about. We need that space so we can grow and innovate and explore. So what I want to leave you with today is this. We have to stop the glorification of busy. Today's society pushes us, encourages us to be busy. As a matter of fact, if we are not busy, we feel like we are failing. Isn't that the truth? If we have a spare moment, we feel obligated to fill it because we have to be busy. Otherwise, we're not doing enough. But when you leave space for you to grow and explore, that is when you become more creative. That is when you're able to really innovate and explore the person that you want to be. And that, my friends, is where happiness lies.